Have you wondered why many Africans are now securing foreign passports? Let's call a speed a speed. Having an African passport in this day and age is a nightmare if you're a frequent traveler. The police also stopped me because I was in Nigeria and, and then they arrested me and they even hit me. Next thing he said was, we need to check your stomach for drugs. I was like, drugs? The Trump administration is expanding its travel ban now. All immigrants from Nigeria will be banned. So I'm finally getting to the plane. And my letter has the word deportee. It's so crazy, man. So. Now, will there ever be a time where travelers bearing passports from Africa or West African countries will be free from the guilty and to prove it innocent? We have heard of incidents of YouTubers or some Africans getting to Hong Kong and getting deported at the airport. Hong Kong is a very developed place. Like the systems, everything here is like really super efficient. So probably in some way they might feel like, okay, you're coming from Africa, you probably want to, you know, overstay or come here, stay here. And I think that's what I think because that's what normally happens for most of the developed countries when you go there uh they always feel like you are going to stay the what are you looking for in our land of milk and honey are you sure you want to overstay and of course the constant pressure of having to repeatedly prove yourself in order to receive bare minimum human services it is frustrating i arrived in hong kong i go through the normal you know procedures of going to the immigration i gave this lady the immigration officer she just looked and saw my passport like this she talked to the friend who was right, not really a friend, but the other immigration officer, like, hey, Kenya. She took my passport and she went, there was a small office just behind her. This officer returned to her front desk and there was a new officer lady who told me, hey, come. So I had to cross and I followed her. She took me to another room where with different officers. So I was sitting there, this other guy came and said, uh, Mr. Ondari, already they have my passport, you know, say Mr. Ondari, Frederick, said, oh, I'm, I'm right here. He took me to another room and started asking me questions. Oh, is your name Frederick? I said, yes. What was my purpose to visit Hong Kong? I say, I'm, I'm a tourist. Which places do you want to visit in Hong Kong? I was, I was like, you know, that was really confusing because normally when you're a tourist, you want to discover new places. Sure. So I, I, I said, actually, I have a... Uh, I have an email here with recommendations, places to visit. So I showed him the email. He went through through the email. He saw the email had different uh, recommendations of different places in Hong mm -hmm. Kong and also beyond Hong Kong. And actually, as I said there, and I told him, actually, I have a ticket for Thailand. He told me, oh, show me the ticket. I showed him the ticket was confirmed, everything, and my flight was there. Then he asked me, so where are you, are you staying in Hong Kong? I, I pulled, I pulled out, I had booked two Airbnbs. The first one was actually a capsule. I wanted to make a video about capsules. I don't know if you know capsules. I had cash with me and he asked me how much I had. I told him I had over a thousand dollars with me. For me, it felt like he was trying to pin me in any other question. He was trying to look for a question. He's looking for a weakness, your weakness or yeah, he's a trying, reason. Yeah, he's trying to find any, any reason. Then he told me, okay, follow me. So I followed him. So he told me to sit down. So when I sat down, he put this tape, you know, like at the airport where, when you, you they put these tapes. Sure, you know? sure, sure. So he put that tape in front of me and he went talking to other officers and he came back saying, Oh, Mr. Frederick, from now on you are detained and we are hereby announcing your refusal to entering Hong Kong. And as if the pre-travel visa process isn't dehumanizing enough, customs are always on the lookout to randomly set your belongings on arrival. Do you know that if you are a Nigerian male between the age of 20 to 35 and you apply for a Dubai visa, you probably will be denied. I was also going to be a speaker at this event, so this was like top, top level. I wasn't just invited, I was going to speak in front of everybody. Yeah, you can imagine I was gingered, ready to go, and then I applied for a Dubai visa. I've been to Dubai before, I was in Dubai in 2019, just before the pandemic, and then the visa came out within a day. But now, I was told that the visa was going to take three days, which wasn't a problem for me because I still had like a week before the actual event was going to take place. So three days wasn't so bad, or so I thought. Only for three days to pass, and then I got denied for a Dubai visa. It's Dubai we are talking about. Dubai is a place that a lot of Nigerians go to. It's also a place that I've been to before. I've made videos in Dubai before on this channel. When I was in Dubai, there was no issue, nothing. 
So I was wondering, why would I be denied for a Dubai visa? Like, that's like the easiest place to travel to across the world because it's the number one tourism center of the world or tourism country of the world. And this is where the problem started. So spoke to the agent, then they started telling me about the fact that Dubai has been denied a lot of Nigerian males between the age of 35 to 20. So the passport power of a country is ranked based on the number of countries the holder can easily access and it gets quite expensive. That is if you start considering the frequency of required visits, many of which are not electronic, you are more likely to purchase more passport pages. If you run into any difficulties that require special services, you pay more expediting fees, document assistance fees, passport retention fees. If you know, you know. With all these liabilities or for a better word, inconveniences, one can understand why many Africans are now purchasing foreign passports and citizenships for ridiculous amounts of money. They are telling me it's going to cost 150,000 US dollars. Guys, guess what finally came in the mail? But one day, at the end of 2018, I was presented with an opportunity that could finally liberate me from the restrictions imposed by my passport. And even more importantly, one that could allow me to travel back to Egypt sooner than 30 years old. I met our travel hacker, Guillaume, in Switzerland at an airport. It was our first time meeting, and he said, Amar. Have you ever thought of applying for another citizenship? And he proceeded to send me a list of all these countries that have opened their borders to entrepreneurs and business people from all over the world to invest in the infrastructure uh, or the economy of that country or real estate and then in exchange get a passport in return. Look at that. This is my certificate that I am a citizen of St. Kitts, right? Citizenship certificate signed by the Prime Minister. <laughs> oh my god. Alhamdulillah. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Don't be discouraged because you see, despite all these challenges, Africans are still traveling. Young Africans are seizing more opportunities across borders. How can you make travel happen on an African passport? The key thing to note is patience and planning. You have a passport. Consider traveling to the few but growing list of visa-free or visa-on-arrival destinations of your passport type. The Africa Visa Openness Index is a handy resource to give you reliable information about visa-free countries you can travel to with your African passport. Now, I'll drop a link in the description below for you to go check it out. Now, it's funny how we live in a free world, yet we are born into our citizenship and our freedom of movement is governed, restricted, and even monetized by political agreements and disagreements. Hey, but always keep a clear mind. My name is Roy Heritage. I am a traveler and an explorer documenting my travel journey in Ghana. Can you hit the like button, subscribe, and share your travel experience with an African passport below? And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.